Hi guys, welcome back to another craft session with Miss Sarah. Today, I'm gonna be showing you how to make these. These are maracas. They are a traditional Hispanic um, musical instrument. They use them in Mexico and Spain. And they're really, really easy to make and fun. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first let me go over the materials that you're gonna need. As always, you always wanna have some newspaper to cover your workstation. For this craft, you're gonna need some paper lunch sacks. Um, you can find these pretty much anywhere, Walmart, Target, um, pretty much anywhere. You probably have some in your pantry maybe. You're gonna actually need two of them for this craft. You're also gonna want something to color with. So I have some markers. And of course I have my crayons here. Love my big crayons. You're gonna need some duct tape. I have some black duct, duct tape. If you have silver or any other color, you can use whatever kind of duct tape you want. Doesn't really matter. You just want a really strong tape. If you have masking tape or the blue painter's tape, that will work just as well. You may have to do a couple extra layers with the masking tape or blue painter tape um, because it's not quite as thick and quite as sticky and strong as duct tape, but it would still work just fine. So if that's all you have, that's totally fine. And then you're also gonna need a really good pair of scissors, right? And what do we put inside of the bags to make that fun shaking sound? Well, you have a couple options. You can use rice, um, but for my craft today, I'm gonna be using beans. You can see these little, these little guys here. So I'm gonna be using maybe just a little handful of those. If you have some little beans, chickpeas, you can use that. If you have rice, you can use that. If you even have some of the big party glitter that you use, sometimes people will put it on the center of a table just as an extra decoration. So if you have leftover big glitter pieces, that works great too. Pretty much um, if you have beads, that works fine as well. So you can kind of experiment. Um, once I show you how to make one, you can maybe make another one and put something different inside to see how it sounds, okay? So for today, we're gonna I'm gonna use the beans and I'm really excited to get started. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and let you collect those items and I'll be right back to show you how to do this. See you in a bit. Hi guys, welcome back. So let's go ahead and get started with our craft here. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is get your paper bag. Now keep in mind that um, as we're decorating, the top of the bag, meaning this part, all of this is going to be twisted up in the handle. So you don't wanna put any decorations here really because you won't see it when we twist it. Um, you wanna focus on decorating this portion of the bag, okay? Um, so I like to decorate both sides and for this particular one, I'm going to go ahead and use markers. Um, you can use any type of marker that you like. I did make two example ones. So you can see this one I did in marker and I kind of colored it all the way around. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. This one I did with crayons and I only did it on the front and the back. So you are under no obligation, and, and the bottom too, you can see that as well. You are under no obligation to go all the way around. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use markers, but I'm actually just gonna do the front and the back. So I'm gonna do kind of a combination of what I've already done. And you notice I am picking two colors, uh, red and green. These are the only two colors I'm gonna work with and that's because these are the two colors from the Mexican flag and I thought that would be a nice nod since this definitely is a um, Hispanic craft, right? These are, these are a, a Hispanic musical instrument. So I definitely want to um, give a nod to the culture that uses these. So I'm going to use red and green and I think I'm gonna start with a green stripe. And just like um, how I did on my examples, I'm just gonna make kind of a wavy line. And I'm gonna start it about here. And then I'm just gonna kind of fill it in. And you can do any kind of design that you want. This is where your paper's gonna come in really handy because then if I wanna go all the way to the edge, I can do that without marking up my table or whatever else I'm working on. And then you can always turn your marker down to the long edge to kind of get a wider 
color and make it go a little bit faster. Sometimes though, it makes it harder to stay in the lines if you do it that way, but you do whatever is comfortable for you. And again, if you don't have markers, you can use crayons. It doesn't matter. Crayons will look great also. Whatever you have to color, colored pencils will even look great. You can use whatever you like. Now I like to kind of twist it as I go. And what I do is I kind of make little marks on the side so that I kind of know where this line ends. So you can see I've got a line there and then on the back I made those two little marks there so that I know where it should meet again. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Kind of twist it, look at where it is, look at there, look at where it is. So I've got my line there and then I've got my two little marks there too. So that it kind of matches up a little bit. And it's okay if it's not exactly perfect. Remember, we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for uniqueness and character. You know, people always get so upset like, oh, I didn't do it right, or oh, I went outside of the lines, or oh, mine doesn't look like the example. Great, I love it when it doesn't look exactly like my example. I think that's great because it's unique. It's you, it's yours, and that makes it special. Okay, so I'm gonna alternate my lines. So I've done a green line, now I'm gonna do a red line. I'm gonna start this one about here. And just like that one, I'm gonna do kind of little wavy lines here. And for this one, I'm actually using a red Sharpie. I didn't have a really good red marker in my supplies. So that's why I found this Sharpie. If you have a green Sharpie, you can use a green Sharpie and a red Sharpie. Just remember though, Sharpies are not washable like regular markers. So you're gonna be, you wanna be really, really careful because this is not gonna wash off. So just like before, I'm gonna pay attention to where my edges are. And I'm gonna be really careful not to get this on my hands because it does not wash off. And I do not feel like walking around with red marks on my hands, okay? It's gonna look kind of weird. So if you're using Sharpie, just be extra careful. I really recommend washable markers or crayons if you wanna be sure, or even colored pencils if you wanna be sure that you don't have um, any of this on your skin. Most markers for kids are washable, but you can look on the label and they'll tell you whether or not they're washable. So I always recommend using that. Otherwise you can use crayons. Crayons look great too. All right, so now I think I'm gonna lift the flap. Now remember that this is the bottom. So this panel here, this panel here of your bag, this little area is gonna be this top part of your maraca, okay? So you don't, you can color it if you want, but you don't have to worry about it until later. So right now what I'm gonna try to do is get, I'm gonna put a, a green stripe here. I'm gonna lift up this flap because I don't want it on here because then it's not gonna show on the side of my bag, right? So I'm gonna do it here. Or side of my maraca, excuse me. All right. And again, you know, you can color this however you want. You don't have to do stripes like I'm doing. You don't have to do red and green like I'm doing. You can use stickers. If you have stickers, you can put any kind of stickers that you want on them. You can put, um, you can put whatever you want on this. So I'm gonna mark my edges here. And I've got those two edges and I'm gonna match those up. All right. Just getting a little bit dry here. That happens. All right. That's the nice thing about using crayons is that they never dry out like markers. Markers kind of dry out sometimes. Okay, and last but not least, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put one more red stripe here on the actual flap part, and then I'm gonna put one more red stripe on the back. And then I should have stripes on that, should make stripes on both sides of my maraca when I have it all ready for me. It's kind of exciting. I'm so excited. Now for this one, I'm not really gonna worry as much. Well, I guess I can. 
So you can fold your flap up like this. You can kind of figure out where your lines are if you want to match it up, but you don't have to. Go ahead and fill that in. <laughs> All right. All right, so there we go. We've got our awesome bag decorated. Now just for the bottom, I like to kinda, I think I'm just gonna kinda let the top be what it's gonna be. And I'm just gonna make some little wavy lines here. And I think I'm gonna use my green and I'll just make some little wavy lines in between there. That looks kinda cool. I think I like that. Got my little decoration going there. So there's what your bag should look like front and back. Now, if you want to decorate the sides, I'm not gonna do that today, but if you want to, you can open up your bag like this. Okay, and then you can see that you can kind of see on the sides where your lines are. So then you would just use your marker and you would um, maybe put some newspaper on top of your hand, hold it inside, and then you would just lightly touch the marker to it so that you can um, make your stripes there, okay? So you would match up your red to your red or your green to your green going around like that if you want to. I'm not gonna do that today, but I'm just showing you that's an option if you would like to. So once you have your bag decorated how you like, and I do, you open it up like I just showed you. And then what you want to do is put your second bag in there. And it doesn't matter whether the flap is facing you or facing out, doesn't matter. You don't want to open it though. You want to leave it flat like this. And you're going to take it and just set it inside of this bag like that, okay? Now you should have two bags like that. You're going to open up this second bag and stick your hand in there and flatten out the bottom so that it's open up just like just like your first bag. I really love that crinkle sound too, that's so fun. All right, so I've got that just the way I want. Now it's time for us to take our filling. So in this case, I have this wonderful little container here of beans and it's up to you how much you want to put in to be honest I have found that a very small handful something maybe like about that works pretty well um, so if you are primary grades probably if you stick your hand in there and get a handful of beans that's gonna be just about the right amount you really don't need a whole lot to make a really good sound um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. One way you can check it though, once you put your handful in, is hold your bag and then just give it a little shake. Is that kind of sort of the sound you want? If not, you can add a little more or you can take some out. I think I like that sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid back on this. Put that aside. Okay. So now you have your beans in your bag. So perfect, okay? So what you're gonna do is gather this together. You're just gonna kind of squish it all together like this, okay? So you're gonna have something that looks kind of like that, all squished together, okay? And what I want you to do is take the top and open this up. So get your fingers inside of the second bag so that you've got that. You're gonna loosen up just a little bit and you're gonna take your finger and kind of make sure that your finger can go through. The reason you're doing that is because you're gonna actually blow into the bag so you can poof out all of this area, okay? So I'm gonna do that right now and I'll show you. When you have it as poofy as you want, close your fingers nice and tight. And then with your other hand, you can start twisting this. Now, if you want to, you can also put a rubber band around it to kind of hold some of the air as well, if you like. I have found I don't need one. I just twist it nice and tight. So you should have something that looks kind of like that right now. To make the handle more sturdy, we're gonna use the duct tape. So I like to kind of cut a really, really big piece. I'm gonna find my end here. And I really like to cut a long piece. 
probably like about maybe that long or so, about a ruler's length at least. So that's about a foot. I like to tape one end to the edge of the table and then pull it straight and cut. That's, that's how I roll. You do it whatever or however works for you. There is no wrong or right way to do this. There is only the easiest way for you. Okay, so you've got your bag all nice and tight. I'm going to start at the base, the part that's next to the poofy part, and I'm going to put my tape around there. And then keeping with that really, really tightness, I'm going to keep going, and I'm going to be pulling really hard as I twist this. I'm pulling really, really hard on my duct tape because I want to be sure you can hold the top too and twist it that way. I want to be sure that it really, really grabs that. And I'm going to keep kind of angling up, coming around and around. You can see that. And around and around and around. And just keep coming really, really, really good. All right. So now I like to kind of squish it one more time. Just make sure you've got that really, really good. And let's give it a test, shall we? So you should have something that looks, something that looks like that. And then you can grab it, turn it upside down. Oh, I love it! So now you can. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? And that is how you can make homemade maracas at home using basically just beans, paper bag, and duct tape. Pretty cool, huh? And, and you, can, you don't even have to color it if you don't want to. Um, these make great ones. You can even use the tape. The handle decoration can be whatever kind of tape you want. I know they make a lot of really fun duct tape designs and you can kind of dress it up however you want. All right, you guys, you did such a good job. <laughs> I love that. I know you did such a good job making these crafts, but stick around. I have a really fun story for you. Hi guys, great job making your maracas. Excellent work. So now I want to share with you a really fun kind of Hispanic story. Um, it has some Spanish words in it. And this one is called Manana Iguana. This is by Ann Whitford Paul, and the pictures are by Ethan Long. Manana means tomorrow. So they're saying tomorrow, iguana. All right, so here we go. On Monday, lunes, that's the Spanish word for Monday, lunes, iguana twitched her tail happily. Let's celebrate spring with a party on Saturday. Conejo, that's bunny or rabbit, hopped up and down. Yes, let's. Tortuga, that's turtle, poked out of his shell. A fiesta on sabado? Count me in. Culebra, that's the snake, shook his rattle. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Me too. Good, said Iguana. We must start right away. Who will help me write the invitations? They're going to throw a party, but there's a lot of work to do. Yo, no, not I, said Conejo. I write too fast. No one could read my words. Yo, no, said Tortuga. I write too slow. I can't hold a pen, said Culebra. Maybe I'll grow arms tonight and can help you tomorrow. We can't wait until mañana, Iguana wriggled her tail. I'll write the invitations myself. And she did. On Martes, Tuesday, Iguana asked, who will help me deliver the invitations for our fiesta? Fiesta party. So now she's written out all the invitations and she needs help delivering them, giving them to the people that they want to come to the party. Yo no, said Conejo. I move too fast. I pass our friends. 
You know, said Tortuga, I move too slow. Culebra said, If I grow arms tonight, I'll help you, mañana, iguana. Mañana will be too late, iguana fidgeted her tail. I'll deliver the invitations myself. And she did. On miércoles, that's Wednesday, iguana asked, Who will help me stuff the piñata for our fiesta? Ooh, that's really fun. Sometimes a piñata can look like an animal, or sometimes it can look like a character, like a Paw Patrol character, or a Fancy Nancy character, it can look like anything. And basically, it's just um, like almost like a box that they cover in, in really pretty paper, and then you can hit it and candy comes out, or sometimes toys. So piñatas are fun and definitely part of a good fiesta. So she wants some help stuffing the piñata, putting the candy and the toys in it. Yo no, said Conejo. I stuff too fast. I rip and tear. Yo no, said Tortuga. I stuff too slow. Culebra said, Mañana, iguana, when I grow arms. Too many excuses. Iguana flounced her tail. I'll stuff the piñata myself. And she did. Uh-oh, but look at her face. Does she look happy or does she look angry? Yeah, I think she looks angry. On jueves, Thursday, Iguana begged, Please, will someone help me cook the food for our fiesta? If they're going to have a lot of people coming over, they're probably going to need a lot of food. And cooking a lot of food takes a lot of time and it's a lot of work. So if they help her, it could go faster. Yo no, said Conejo. I cook too fast. I make a mess. Yo no, said Tortuga. I cook too slow. Culebra said, if I grow arms, I'll help you mañana, Iguana. Iguana slapped her tail on the ground. <sighs> I'll cook the food myself. And she did. Uh-oh. She's looking angrier and angrier, isn't she? On viernes, that's Friday, the day before their party, Iguana sighed. I don't suppose anyone will help me hang the streamers for our fiesta. So she wants help decorating for the party. Do you think they'll help her? Let's see. Yo no, said Conejo. I hang too fast. I tear the streamers. Yo no, said Tortuga. I hang too slow. Culebra said, I'll help you hang the streamers. Iguana clapped, hooray! I'll help you, mañana, iguana, when I grow my arms. <gasps> oh no, she looks super mad. She was so excited because she thought Culebra was gonna help her, and he didn't. Super disappointing. I knew it! Iguana smacked her tail on the ground so hard, she puffed up a cloud of dirt. I'll decorate myself! And she did. Look at that. Do you see the piñata? Yeah, do you see the food? Do you see the balloons? She sure is making a great looking party there. And then it was Sabado! That's Saturday, Sabado! Conejo hopped up and down. We're ready for our fiesta! Tortuga poked out of his shell. Here come our guests! Culebra rat shook his rattle. Let's greet them! No! 
Iguana whipped her tail around in angry circles. Ooh, she's mad. I wrote the invitations and I delivered them. I stuffed the piñata. I cooked the food. I hung the streamers. Now I and I alone will greet my guests at my fiesta. Hmm. Now some people might think that that was kind of mean of Iguana to not let them come. But she asked for help lots of times, didn't she? And did they help her? No, they didn't help her even though she asked over and over and over. So she feels very upset. It's not fair for them to come to a party when they made her do everything. And I guess maybe they didn't make her do everything, but if she didn't do it, they wouldn't have a party, would they? So it's kind of not fair. I can kind of see where Iguana is coming from. And she did. She greeted all the guests. Conejo hurried to hide behind a cactus. Tortuga shrunk into his shell and Culebra slithered under a rock. They are feeling bad, I think. But that looks like a great party. Think they wish they could go to the party? Bet they do. They watched for a long time while the guests laughed and ate and broke the piñata. Look at that. What is that, an armadillo maybe? That broke open the piñata? Looks like candy's coming out too. And they have music playing. Maybe it's maraca music. <laughs> The guests said as they left. Wow, they really had a lot of fun at Iguana's party. Iguana yawned. Ooh. I'm too tired to clean up. I'll do it manana. She stretched out and soon slept. Conejo hopped out from behind the cactus. Iguana's really worn out, he said. Tortuga poked out of his shell. She should be. She did everything. Culebra slithered out from under the rock. And we did nothing. They were silent for a long time. I think maybe they figured out why Iguana was so upset. Maybe they even felt bad. Guilty? Do you ever feel guilty? Sometimes when you know that you should have maybe helped with something and you didn't? Sometimes you can feel guilty. Suddenly, Conejo said, I have an idea. He told it to his friends. That's great, said Tortuga. Culebra said, let's start now. And they did. <gasps> I wonder what they're going to do. Do you have any ideas? Let's see. Conejo pulled down streamers, put away leftovers, and packed up the trash. Tortuga scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed one giant platter. And Culebra squiggled and squirmed, sweeping the ground spotless. What did they do? They cleaned up. They cleaned up. Yeah, that's kind of a great way to say you're sorry, isn't it? So they did something nice for Iguana to show her that they appreciate her. It's kind of cool. They worked until Domingo, that Sunday. And Iguana woke up. She rubbed her eyes and looked around. She looked at Conejo and Tortuga and Culebra. Iguana smiled. Gracias, she said. Thank you. Then she twitched her tail happily. 
You must be hungry from your hard work. Who will help me eat the leftovers? You'll see, cried Conejo, Tortuga, and Culebra. <gasps> awesome! So now they're all going to share the leftovers. Look at that. They all did. There wasn't a lot left over, but what there was, they all shared. Isn't that a great story? I like that, and I like that it had a lesson, too. Yeah, you might recognize a story similar to this called, um, it's about the little red hen, right? And she wants to plant the weed, and nobody will help her with the weed, and then she makes the bread, and everybody wants to eat the bread, right? But nobody wanted to help kind of unfair. So the same thing happens here with iguana and the fiesta. All right, you guys, I hope you had a great time making your maracas and listening to the story. I had a great time showing you how to do that. If you make one, please post it in the comments. It does not have to be red and green like mine. It can look however you want. It's your maraca, okay? And remember, you can make two of them since they're so easy. And now you have one for each hand. All right, you guys, I'll see you next time, okay? Have a good time, stay safe, be well, and I'll see you again soon with another fun craft. Bye.